Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends. Welcome back to the channel. And on this week of break from One Piece, I bring you more One Piece, as you can imagine. This time around, I bring you a video that I've been baking in the oven for quite a while, and it's the fight between the Alliance and the company of Kaido. Now, I tried to hold this one off as long as I could. May I was mainly waiting for the reveal of the Tobi Ropu, which we got two chapters ago, so I could include them in the roster. Now, there are still some players that are not, you know, known, mainly the numbers, and Honestly, almost all of the of the Oniwawanchu and the Mimowari Gumi are unknown to us. They could either be father, not the numbers though. They could either uh, the other two, uh, the Oniwawanchu and the Mimowari Gumi. They could either be father, or they could be something special. I don't think there'll be anything special. You'll get to see why. But the numbers. But I can't hold this off much longer. So. Here we are, the fights that I think should happen in the Wano arc. Before we begin, if you enjoy my content and this video in particular, please drop a like, a comment and subscribe. I was really, really hoping we could get to 50 subscribers before the 23rd of July. Why the 23rd of July? Well, it's my birthday, so I would consider it a very generous birthday gift on you on your on your guys's part if we could get to 50 subscribers before then so please if you like the content and the channel please do subscribe and leave a like and a comment with your fights the fights you want to see for the 1 arc because i guarantee you no matter which fights i bring up i am certain you guys will have interesting fights to share with me so please do that in the comment section down below but let us start i'm gonna try to move i'll move the fights from the alliance perspective so it will always be luffy versus someone zoro versus someone i won't say the other way around kaido versus luffy king versus zoro i'll i'll move it from the alliance side so from the main character side so I will start with the fights per group. So the first group is, of course, the Straw Hat group. So Luffy will, of course, battle Kaido. That much is given. Let's get it out of the way. The main fight of this arc will be Luffy versus Kaido. There's no denying it. No matter if Luffy's gonna get help, if Kaido's gonna get weakened by that point, or anything, Luffy is gonna fight Kaido. I'm, I'm sorry I had a little break, I hope I cut that break. And yet another break, this video is gonna, this video is gonna be a hell to edit. But anyway, Luffy versus Kaido is the staple we are all waiting for. So Luffy versus Kaido is the first, not the first, but it's the first on this list. But it's the one battle that we know it's gonna happen. Keeping on Kaido's topic, Zoro versus Kaido. I know this is very, very controversial because there's a lot of variables in this arc, like a lot, a lot. Because Zoro got Enma, the sword from Odin that was the only sword to ever wound Kaido. Now, Oda can't expect to give Zoro such a blade and then not use it against Kaido. So, my idea is, way before the Luffy versus Kaido fight, way before the final fight, Zoro and Kaido will face off. Like, it, it, it doesn't need to be a full-fledged fight, it can't be a full-fledged fight, because... <laughs> As much as I would love to see Zoro defeat Kaido single-handedly, I do honestly doubt that can happen. 
Like, unless a bigger threat than Kaido appears to Luf for Luffy to face, Zoro can't just defeat a young girl like that. Unless it was established that, for instance, Big Mom was stronger than Kaido. But even then, Big Mom's not the point of this arc. Kaido is, so Luffy needs to defeat Kaido. But honestly, I would love for the situation to be such that Zoro could be able to would be able to defeat Kaido. Because it would just be bonkers, but it, it won't happen. But the thing is, Zoro versus Kaido needs to be a brief exchange of blows. Like, make it so that Zoro just wanders into Kaido's into Kaido's little room, where he saw him last chapter, talking with the Tobiropo. Let's just say that Zoro just wanders in there. And like Kaido is drinking, he's there alone drinking. And then Zoro gets in with the outfit and everything, and Kaido's like, What are you doing here? Like, weren't you supposed to be partying with the other guys? You don't exactly have clearance to be around here. And Zoro's like, Oh. So, let me get this straight. If I deal with you right now... And he starts pulling Enma. And Kaido's like, Ah, so you're not one of my guys. And Zoro's like, No, not really. And it just pulls out Enma, pulls out Sandai Kitetsu, and just goes Nitoryu right there, and just goes, But if I do take care of you right now, that would help us out a bunch. And Kaido just goes like, oh, I'm too drunk for this shit, but okay, let's go. <laughs> he picks up his club and just, BAM! Mo next moment we see, we see Zoro flying through the wall into that part and we see Kaido leaving. Stubble goes on, Zoro manages to wound Kaido with Enma, everyone goes bananas because it's a repeat of what happened 20 years ago with Odin. So this is how I think it could play out, it should play out in my opinion, but the main fight for Mr. Zoro, much to my dislike, not dislike, but dismay, because I really don't have a cohesive way to see this happening. I mean, none of these, except for the Luffy versus Kaido, honestly, have a feasible way of happening. Some more than others, granted, but not all of them. And this one is one of those that I'm not really feeling it. But I put it in just because it is so widely accepted. And honestly, it would be cool. Zoro versus King. Now, People put Zoro vs. King because, oh, it's the right-hand man of the big boss himself. Zoro is the right-hand man of Luffy. King is the right-hand man of Kaido. King has a sword. We don't know to which degree he uses it. And is a flying opponent, so it would provide a nice enough challenge for Zoro. Now, based on this alone, yeah, it would make a pretty fight. Now, would it be that good of a fight probably Oda can make good fights work wherever he can like back in Enya's lobby we didn't knew our, out of the bat that Zoro would be fighting Kaku because we didn't we didn't know Kaku was a swordsman we, we didn't know we didn't knew any of them were a swordsman we just we just assumed that Zoro if Zoro were to fight anyone it would be a swordsman. So then when Zoro faced off against Kaku and we discovered that Kaku was a swordsman, we were like, okay, this makes sense. From then on, even before, from Alabasta, we always assume, okay, Zoro faces the swordsman. It makes sense. Zoro had faced Hachan back in Arlong Park, so it became a staple. So now every time that people see someone with a sword, or even let's let's think um what's his face uh the stone guy from dress rosa oh god pika let's think pika pika was not a swordsman per se he was a melee fighter but oda had to give him a sword 
because Zoro only faces swordsmen. You see, it's kind of this thing. So, to my belief, King is not exactly a swordsman. Because he has his, his devil fruit, and I believe he relies way more on the devil fruit than the swordsman, it, than the sword itself. But, there was one thing in the anime, and I know that the anime takes liberties, I know. But there was one thing that got me thinking in the anime. When King was introduced, when his fruit was introduced, back when he went to tackle Big Mom's ship, the anime gave a strange note to a strange amount of attention to the fact that King used one of his claws, legs, thing. That got me thinking. Can, could King fight using his legs in his dinosaur form? Because if so, and if in his human form he uses a sword, well, it could be an interesting mix between Zoro and Sanji from the Straw Hat crew. That could make for a sort of tag team battle. Sanji deals with him on his, Terran, on his Devil Fruit form, and Zoro deals with him in his human form. But, again, tag teams are not something that Oda does. I have a few two-on-one and one-on-some battles here, but I don't think that either Zoro or Sanji deserve to have a two-on-one fight. They should have their own one-on-one -on -one fights. So yeah, that's Zoro. Zoro will have a brief clash with Kaido. He has to, because of Enma. And if it has to be after that clash, he'll get a bit mangled and he'll defeat King all the same. Now, next. This will be even more controversial. Not this one, but the next one. Sanji versus Page One. Just a rematch, just for Sanji to prove that he can defeat Page One, because we did not see how that battle ended. And I, I believe we deserve to see that. So, Sanji versus Page One, pretty straightforward. I just want Sanji to kick that, the dinosaur booty. So, next one, Sanji versus Yamato. Now, hear me out. Hear me out. I know we know next to nothing about Yamato other than his name. But I, for God, do not want him to be a good guy. Like, he can be against Kaido, for all I care, but I do not need him to be an ally. I don't want him to be an ally. The story doesn't need any more allies, and definitely the story doesn't need yet another child who will prove to be the bane of his own parent. Like, we don't need that. We had plenty of that with Big Mom. I want Yamato to be this edgy guy, like, who lives in the shadow of his father, but yearns to one day overcome him. That's what I want him to be. I don't want him to be a good guy. I want him to be a shitty guy, if not necessarily a bad guy, but not a good guy either, just a shitty guy, just a guy who's out for his own interests. Now, why do I think Sanji will face or could face Yamato? In this most recent chapter, Bao Huan came and recited the plans for the Fire Festival, and the last item she cited was the important announcement on Kaido's part, right after the fact that Big Mom and Kaido would announce the world's powerful, the world's most powerful alliance to everyone in the crew. Now, how does Big Mom form alliances exactly? You're right, marriages. So, my idea is that she decided to marry Yamato to one of her daughters. And which daughter would that be? You're right, once again, if you said pudding, because that would be ostentatiously cool. Like, Yamato having to marry Pudding would be the perfect catalyst to have Sanji fight against Yamato. 
as I said on the chapter review, Sanji would be like, ain't nobody gonna marry that pudding but me. Sanji was really smitten by pudding, as was pudding by him. So, I, based on all this, and on my own personal wants, then again, this is all my personal opinions, based on that, I do not think that Yamato should be a good person or a tool against Kaido. <coughs> but it should be really this shitty guy and just have a fight against Sanji. So yeah, next fight. The next fight is in keeping with the Straw Hats team. These two are really, really basic. I mean, the next three, four actually, the next four are gonna be pretty basic because I just couldn't put them up against anyone else. So, I'm, I'm just gonna say them in a straight line and explain them as I go along. So, Nami versus Ulti. Again, Bay versus Bay. There's really no other choice. They seem to be the youngest of of respective group in terms of female characters and the next one you guessed it Robin versus Black Maria so mature versus mature I mean we know next to nothing about Ulti and Black Maria other than their names and appearances personalities a bit Ulti is a bit more all over the place Black Maria is a bit more playish a little more play playful and uh, yeah, other than the fact that they're females and Oda doesn't do female fights all that well in recent in recent events, so it might as well just mix them together and maybe something good will come out of this fight. The next one is for Usopp, and honestly, I did not know who to put up who to put up against Usopp. I came up with an idea of putting him up against Mondor. Now, we know, we don't know Mondor's fighting capabilities, but Mondor and Usopp both are a bit of tacticians. So, maybe a battle of wits more than a battle of pure strength, and I'm sure that Mondor has some sort of ability based around his books. So, you know, traps and whatnot, that sort of thing. And the other one is just a, a quick encounter that I would love to see, mostly because I hate the character that he's going up against, Chopper vs. Flampe. Now, this is not to be a full-fledged fight. Again, it's something akin to Zoro's brief encounter with Kaido, except that this time Chopper wins. What I think could happen is Flampe arrives when the whole thing is already, you know, the, the battle has already begun, things have gone to hell and back, and, you know, the Straw Hats are not all together, but some are together in a group. Like, let's say Nami, Chopper and Usopp that are together are together still. And Flampe, I don't know, is there parading around and she sees Chopper. And she goes like, oh, what a cute pet, I'm going to claim him for myself and, uh, and whatnot. And I'm going to save him from that stupid guy, Straw Hat Luffy. And Chopper is like, what did you say about my captain? And Flampe goes like, all willy-nilly for him. And Chopper just goes like, and just knocks out Flampe in one go. It would be fun to see. I honestly, honestly really want to see that. Just Chopper just... Just one shotting Flambe just because I hate Flambe. And she's there, she might as well get knocked out early. Another fight that I would love to see Chopper in, and not a brawler fight, but a Chopper versus Queen, but on a medical standpoint. Because Queen manufactures diseases, Chopper manufactures cures. cures. So imagine, Queen is injecting all these diseases on the samurais and the and the pirates the, the low end samurais and the, the yakuza's and the udon prisoners the, the the father the general father and 
Chopper is like manufacturing the cures really quick and Quinn is like, oh, he cured that one, so how's, how do you like them apples? And he throws another one that's supposedly worse than the previous one and it goes like, let's say, three or four, like back and forth, three, uh, four diseases, four cures, like sort of like that. And each time Queen gets more and more enraged of course, Chopper, as much as I like Chopper as any other guy, Chopper has no chance of beating Queen, let alone hurt him. So that's when comes the next fight. Frankie versus Queen. Another controversial one. I really would like to see Frankie versus Queen. We could say, well, but technically Queen should stay for Sanji because, you know, the third, the, the, the second right hand or the left hand, and then you have Sanji who's the third guy on the crew. And I'm like, that's all well and good, but... <sighs> Honestly, if we go by pure style-wise, Frankie versus Queen is a match made in heaven. Like, you have the funky queen versus the super Frankie. What else can we ask for? For nothing, really. For nothing that much. So, Frankie versus queen. And it would elevate Frankie to levels behind comprehension. Like, I can already imagine Frankie fighting that gigantic dinosaur that is queen. So, that, that for me, that would be the goal. Next one, and to close the Straw Hat group, <laughs> this is probably the, the most controversial one right here. But it's Jinbei and Brooke versus Big Mom. I know, I know, I know, this is impossible. I hear you thinking, I hear you writing in the comments, how dare you propose that Big Mom should be defeated by Jinbei and Brooke and not Luffy or Law or Kid or I don't know, whoever else. Calm down, please, do, do not be mean with me, I, I have an explanation or I try to. I never meant for this fight to be a total defeat for Big Mom. Because I know, and I agree, that Big Mom is not a player that should be taken out of the, off the board that easily. But that doesn't mean that this fight serves as a means for Luffy to defeat her. In fact, for me, personally, I don't even want Luffy to face off against Big Mom. At all. Like, fight-wise. I do not want them to engage in a fight at all. It will happen. It will most likely happen. I am prepared for that. But personally, I really do not want that to happen. Because... If we start stacking things up, you know, Luffy versus Big Mom, Luffy versus Kaido, any other fight that Luffy can have, it's gonna start to get crowded. A lot of fights, a lot of things for Luffy to, to take. And although Luffy is the main character, it doesn't, he doesn't need to be the center of everything. We have been wanting, we have been needing, as fans, we have been needing a saga where all the Straw Hats get to shine with their individual fights. The last time that happened properly, I want to say Fishman Island, because it did. They all had their individual fights. Even though Nami was up against randoms, and uh, I'm so sorry, allergies... I'm, I was doing some cleaning yesterday and the dust got all over me. So sorry about that. And uh, Robin faced off against that random guy that was responsible for the sleighs or something. But 
they had their individual fights. But then again, Fishman Island was the saga to showcase their growth. And yeah, it was expected. Wano, however, is the is the so far pinnacle of this new saga. Things need to happen. Like big fights need to happen. So Jinbei and Brook versus Big Mom would be big. Then again, it does need to be an end all fight. Big Mom doesn't need to be defeated by this fight, and she's not gonna be defeated by this fight, to be honest. But it's just something that I would really, really want to see. And we have Jinbei who has a story with Big Mom. And we have Brooke, who's the only guy in the crew, and also Jinbei because water, that can damage Prometheus. And so far, Prometheus is one of the two weapons that Big Mom has to make damage. So if they can neutralize Prometheus, she only has Napoleon. Granted, I say this as in, oh, she only has Napoleon. No, she still has Napoleon. But if they can neutralize Prometheus, even if it's just for a while, that's an AoE they don't need to worry about, because that's what Prometheus is. Prometheus is a big-ass AoE, so they don't need that. So if, if they can neutralize it, like for good, that would be a victory for the entire alliance, because Big Mom needs only to pick up Prometheus, and Onigashima is all but gone. So this fight, I'm even gonna add it to the world. I have a word sheet here with, with the fights. So this is a Prometheus Buster fight. Yeah, Prometheus Buster fight. There, added. This is a Prometheus Buster fight. That, that's the point, I'm gonna coin it right here. You guys help me see, help me see that. So that's the point of this fight, is a Prometheus Buster fight. <coughs> So sorry about that. This is it for the Straw Hat group. Before we move on to the to the scabbards and the and some other guys, I'm gonna go over Law and Kid. Now for Law and Kid, I do not have a lot of um, a lot of options. So for Law, I put him up against Yes Drake, but as a ruse. Because there's this long-standing theory that the S Drake was the one who actually got Law out of jail, and that they are secretly working together to facilitate the entrance of the Alliance. And so they will engage, mostly to reconvene, and midway through their fight, the S Drake will turn, and he'll show. Kaido and the remaining of the crew that he was a that he was a a mole all along and that he has been working with the alliance. That's what I think is going to happen. The S Drake is working as a marine, and I believe that he's sensible enough to see that he needs to do certain things in order to achieve his goal. So. He's gonna be sort of like Garp in this situation. Not, not that I'm comparing the S Drake as a whole to Garp as a whole, but the situation itself. This is very God Valley like, because Garp had to join up with Roger to defeat Rox. So in a sense, I believe that the S Drake will choose to band up with the Alliance, mainly with Luffy in order to stop Kaido, because he can't expect to face Kaido all alone. And if, I, if I'm allowed to go a step further, I think that this Law and Drake partnership was in effect way all the way back in Shibandi. Because they had that brief encounter and many people speculated that after, after Law asked Luffy to join him in an alliance, that the S Drake was the first one to join that alliance. But we'll see, we'll see. Now, as for Kid, 
I'm gonna give him something. I'm gonna give him a carrot. Kid will have a brief encounter against Kaido. Like, I think the guy deserves that much. Will he win? Of course not. Could I put him? In, could I put him up against Big Mom? I could, but honestly, I don't really see the value in that. Other than just to prove if he ended up being the Big Mom defeater, if nothing else, just to prove that he could, and that would put him on par with Luffy. Kid defeated Big Mom. Luffy defeated Kaido. You have the worst generation members neck on neck with one another. The, on, the other one is a Yonko and there's two that defeated Yonkos. So two new Yonko candidates. Luffy is already a Yonko candidate per se. But yeah, maybe Kid versus Big Mom. But the main fight that I would like for Kid this arc is Kid versus Apu. Now, this is purely a revenge fight, because Apu was already a subordinate of Kaido's when they were making their little alliance, and he ended up betraying them, and then Hawkins went and did the same. So yeah, this is purely a revenge fight. Nothing all that much. Kid versus Apu. I would like to see a Brook versus Apu, because, you know, music versus music. That would be interesting, but the main fight for Kid, I believe, should be versus Apu. Now, we are getting on the end game here. St uh, not Straw Hats, I already did the Straw Hats, you dingus. Scabbards, next. So, first one, the leader of the Scabbards, Kinemon versus Kanjuro. It has to happen. Like, I want Kinemon to lob Kanjuro's head off. Now, these two need to fight. Kinemon is the de facto leader of the Scabbards. Kanjuro betrayed the Scabbards, he betrayed Wano. Kinemon needs to take responsibility. So, Kinemon versus Kanjuro, pretty straightforward. Make this happen, Oda, please, I beg of you. And bring Luffy's coat back. These are the two things I beg you. Kinemon vs. Kanjiro and Luffy's coat back. Please make it happen. Next one, Denjiro vs. Orochi. Now, a lot of people, when when Wano was, was in the talks, and we discovered that the Shogun was the big bad of Wano, a lot of people wanted to see Zoro vs. Orochi. Orochi needs to be Zoro's opponent and whatnot. A lot of people predicted the Yamato no Orochi fruit. And um, a lot of people wanted to see Orochi, but honestly, is Zoro worthy of Orochi? Like, really, is Orochi... I guess I should say the otherwise. Is Orochi worthy of having Zoro... Zoro fight against him? Is he, though? Whereas Denjiro, I think there's a story there, like... Denjiro was twisted, shaped into that form of his by the actions of Orochi and Kaido. He was not forced, he forced himself to serve under Orochi to be close to action, close to the source, to better take it out. I guess it would it would be called vindication to have Denjiro be the one to strike Orochi down. Like really, imagine Denjiro appearing before Orochi, Orochi recognizing him as Kyoshiro, and Denjiro going like, "Yeah, about that. I, I I'm all for the swords today. I I wish I had a sword here. Should have should have should have brought my umbrella to serve as a sword." Not that he has a sword handle, but it, it would help with the imagery. So yeah, then Jiro versus Orochi, I think, would be a, a gracious fight, full of story, full of background, and full of motive, and all the more satisfying when we would finally see Orochi tumbling down and bleeding to death.
again, please make it happen. Next, uh, these two are like uh, Ashura Doji versus Who's Who and Kawamatsu versus Sasaki. Again, we don't know a lot about Who's Who or Sasaki, but yeah, Sasaki appears to be a fishman, so Kawamatsu versus Sasaki, fishman versus fishman. We could argue the same Jinbei versus Sasaki, but honestly, as Jinbei is already full, I would say that Kawamatsu versus Sasaki would be a fair choice. And Ashura Doji versus Who's Who? I mean, why not? I really have no idea. Because, honestly, I think these two will stay as Tobiropa members. I think none of them will be able to ascend to Calamity status. So, yeah. I, I talked a bit about that on my chapter review for 979. And probably on 9... On 980, I'll I'll talk about it again, but this is it really, Ashura Doji and Kawamatsu, who's who and Sasaki. Like, I really don't see them, I don't see them facing against the Calamities, except for two of them, uh, two of the Scarabs, that is. And uh, honestly, I don't really want to put them in headliner fights, because unless it's just for father, just them going around slashing headliners left, right and center. That's okay, but for full-fledged fights, I want them at least on Tobiro status or at the very least numbers. But since we don't know anything about the numbers, I have not considered the numbers here. So, next one is the big one, Inurashi Nekomamuchi versus Jack. Yes, this needs to happen as well. This is will this will be a revenge battle for Zo, for Zonisha, and Inuarashi Nekomamushi Sulong versus Jack. Now Nekomamushi hasn't appeared yet, but he will appear. So when he appears, imagine Inuarashi is facing Jack. He's a little overwhelmed with a lot of people, a lot of pleasures, gifters, and whatnot. Random samurai, like not that he's losing. It's just. You know, he's just chewing on too much food at the same time. So his plate is full. Like, if you have a plate full of food, you don't know where to start. So that's kind of the situation. Inurash is not losing. And then, on top of that, Jack appears. And he's like, ah, now we got you. No, no, no. Inurashi man is still slashing at the pleasures, gifters. Headliners, bah, bah, left, right and center. And he's getting a little bit tired because... You know, that thing will take its toll. But then all of a sudden, you see Guardians appear. You see Rhodey, Blackback, and all, and the other guys just taking on the smaller fry. And then you start hearing that that laugh, that Goron Yan 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 coming in the distance, and bam, you have Nekomamushi. Next shot, you have the moon. Imagine, at that, at that point, the Guardians break through the roof and they destroy the roof to let the moonlight in. And then, like, you see Nekomamushi and Inuarashi side by side. And they go to one another and say, like, let's tear this, let's tear this party asunder. And they look up and you see their eyes, like, widening. And then... We see the, the warning, no One Piece chapter next week. I don't know what, but every time there's these big ass moments, I always say this, and we'll see this, and then we see the warning, there's no chapter next week, because that's what Oda does, isn't it? But anyway, Inuarashi versus Nekomamushi, uh, Inuarashi versus Nekomamushi, that's a whole nother can of beans that's been opened, emptied, and closed back at Zo. Inuarashi Nekomamushi versus Jack. Now, a lot of people say, oh, that's gonna be an easy win. Jack is weak. Jack may be weak. He may be the weakest of the calamities, but I believe he's not weak by any means. Because he managed to hold off his own against Inurashi Nekomamuchi individually. 
them combining their strengths together is what I think will be his downfall, but I don't mean that he's weak by any, in any way. And that's why I don't think that who's who or Sasaki, whoever gets up against him, will defeat him. But that's another can of beans for another, for another meal. The last of the scabbards that I am considering, the two last of the scabbards are Kiku and Raizo. And I'm putting Kiku versus the Mimowari Gumi. Now, why am I putting Kiku against the whole group? Honestly, because I had no one else to put her against. And since I didn't have an individual fight for her, I decided what's the next best thing? Have her against the whole group. This would show not only that she's that he's strong, but also that the Mimo Arigumi are not all that much. I mean, it's, it's a trade-off, because if you put someone against an entire group, you either have to establish that the group is weak as hell, or that the individual is strong as whole heck. So, unless a balance can be stricken, like you get one of the Mimo Arigumi that stays its ground until the end of the fight and is all bloodied and Kiku just... and they face off in one last attack and they both fall but the Mimo Arigumi guy is way more wounded and Kiku still manages to, to hold her ground, his ground, there. And she goes like, it was a worthy fight. And I can fight no longer. And she goes like, Ugh, and she falls. And that's her participation then on, on the fight. It could be. The next two, Shinobu versus Fukurokujo individually, or, but this one can still happen in this one, Shinobu and Raizo versus the entire Oniwabanchu. Again, two ninjas versus the ninja squad. Why do I think... That Shinobu should face Fukurokujo? Well, because Shinobu was part of the of the Oniwabanchu. She served under Fukurokujo. And I just think it would be awesome to to you know see to see her go against her once mentor, master, and just prove herself to be the superior ninja. Because I believe that Fukurokuju has some you know, top-notch fighting capabilities. So, yeah. And then, I would like to see them both, Shinobu and Raizu versus the Oni Wabanchu, because it just makes sense. There may be some other ninjas we don't know, we haven't seen all that many ninjas. There's that Shinobu-looking guy that was spying on the capital a few chapters back, like a lot of chapters back now. It was... It was before the flashback, so that's poof, that's all the way over there. So yeah, maybe he can appear. He's not there as far as we know. We haven't seen him all that much. So yeah. It would be fun. Last fight, last the last important fight, and one that I really, really, really wanna see. Keraton Wanda versus Peru Sparrow. Again, this would be another so long fight. We would get to see Wanda Sulong form and Carrot Sulong form again. And versus Peru's Peru, it would just be pretty cool. Because it's a revenge fight. So it's a revenge fight for Pedro. Well, unless Pedro decided to be alive like a certain Mr. Pound. I'm on to you, Mr. Pound. Jesus Christ. If if Oda brings Pedro back, I'm I'll I won't do anything, but I'll I will not like it. I will not like it. I'll tell you that much. And so yeah, these are the big fights. Then I put a last one here that uh, comprises just the randoms: Lost Crew, Kids Crew, the Samurais, and the Minks. Versus the pleasures, the gifters, the samurais, the enemy samurais, and the homies, if there are homies in the battle. So, this is it. There were a few players left out on both sides. I have, like, a board, a, a, ta a table here with a few names. 
On the Alliance side, I left out Sicilian, Hiogoru, and the Yakuza bosses, Omasa, Tsunagora, Cho, and, y and Yatape. On the Kaido side, I left out Hawkins, because honestly, I don't know if Hawkins will appear or fight. Uh, I left out the numbers because we really don't know anything about them. I left out Smoothie because I had I didn't have anyone to put her up against. I Fugu Compound, Galette and Ryzen of the Big Mom Pirates as well. There were a few of the Big Mom Pirates that were shown in chapter 930 that I didn't consider because they're just I mean I consider Raisin. Just just because he looks cool. It's the Madara looking guy with the sword. Like, and the, I'll, I'll have a picture of him somewhere around on the video. It, it, it's this guy. Whether it's here or here, it's this guy. So, yeah. Editor me, just put a photo of Ryzen somewhere in here. And please don't put notes saying you, you won't do it. Don't, don't mock me, please. So, yeah. These were the fights. I have no idea how long this video is already. These were the fights that I consider to be the most the ones that would have the most impact on the arc and they would have the most story behind them some of them i'm not sure as i said nami usopp chopper robin i really don't know who to put them against uh kiko and raizo again shinobu as well and like the other ones I didn't even mention and mention right now, Shisili, Niyogoru, Hamasa, the Yakuza's, I mean, for all I care, the Yakuza's, even Yogoru, I mean, they can fight against the headliners. Just put the five of them against all the headliners, like the strongest of the gifters, put them against the headliners, and we're set. I believe they, they put them against a massive force, of Shishilin as well, yeah. But Shishilin can fight a number. Yeah, Shishilin can fight a number. I believe the numbers are a sufficient enough challenge that Shishilin can overcome. Yeah, put Shishilin and the Musketeers, the other guys. Um, Condor? It's not Condorcet. What am I saying? It's not Condorcet. I don't, I don't know the other... Again, these two guys, the Zebra and the Fox. Um... They can fight against numbers. Each of them, they can fight against numbers. That that would be cool, I guess. I wouldn't put them against, like, Smoothie. No. I had this funny idea of having Brooke against Smoothie. But then I remembered that her fruit can extract liquid from non-living things. So, yeah, it, my first idea didn't really work out because it would be kind of like... Okay, Brooke's already dead, so she has nothing to squeeze from. Yo ho ho! But no. Um, but it would be cool. It could be cool to see Brooke against Smoothie or any other member of the of the Big Mom Pirates. So yeah, this was my list of fights for the One Arc. I'm sure I left some out of consideration. But that's where you guys come in. Please do let me know your opinions in the comment section down below. What are you expecting to see on this arc? Are any of these fights in your list? Or are there others that I didn't mention that you would like to see? I would very much like to hear them or rather read them in the comment section down below. I remind you, please drop a like and subscribe if you like the content. If we could please reach 50 subscribers by July 23rd, that's more than two months away, so I believe we have the time. It would mean the world to me, and from then, from there, we would see where we could go. So, I'll bid you guys farewell, until tomorrow, with another video, and hope you have a fantastic week. Bye-bye.